Welcome to Power System Protection Lectures. Uh, my name is Pratap Mysore and I will be covering uh, transmission line um, uh, protection in the next four uh, lectures. This is the first part of it where we will cover about the parameters of a transmission line and then uh, how do we get the resistance, reactance and capacitance of the transmission line. As protection engineers, we are interested in these parameters and then this is just a background information that will provide to validate the values you got is right or wrong. That is again I emphasize here it is just to validate the numbers which you get is correct or not. There are uh, 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 programs available where you just put in these uh, line parameters, uh, line configuration and then you get these positive sequence and zero sequence impedances of the transmission lines. And this is a background uh, information that to validate what you have is, uh, is the right number or not. So if you look at transmission lines, these transport uh, power from uh, point A to point B, point A being the generator, uh, center, generation center, and point B is the load center. And uh, normally generators, uh, they generate uh, power um, at uh, up to a voltages of 26 kV then uh, the MVA is up to, up to 1000 megawatts. Then you, trans, you step it up to reduce the current because the power is voltage times the current and then reduce the current so you can transmit the same amount of power at higher voltages with less current carrying uh, conductors. Uh, so you have a overhead transmission line. In this country, it is up to 765 kV and in the world, you, can, you have 1100 kV lines and there are also underground cables available up to 230 kV. Most of the distribution systems are now getting converted in underground cables. This is up to 34.5, but these are available with solid dielectric up to 230 kV, and oil filled cables are also available up to 500 kV. Please look at uh, the manufacturer's uh, catalogs and uh, you know Google it and then look at it. Search, or use, use the search engine and look for that. There is a lot of research going on and we might already have a solid dielectric uh, cable up to 500 uh, kV. <clears throat> Transmission towers are basically steel structures or wooden structures which provide support to hang these wires, uh, uh, three-phase wires. So there are different examples. There are steel lattice towers or wooden edge frame or wooden uh, poles or you have uh, tubular uh, uh, structures and then there are other composite materials that are used to make the poles. And there are always ground wires on the top of the transmission sucksters in most of the K places uh, due to, uh, to avoid uh, striking uh, lightning strikes uh, hitting the phase conductors. So whenever a lightning strikes, it always hits the topmost part. And these ground wires provide shielding against lightning uh, from hitting uh, the phase conductors. In some areas, they don't use the ground wires because the terrain has a very high resistance and also the, uh, the probability of lightning uh, is also low in those areas. This is from the reference book, the front cover. This is a lattice uh, tower steel uh, uh, structure here. And then you have got ground wires, uh, ground wire on the top here. You can only have another wire here, which you don't see. And then there are two three phase uh, uh, transmission lines on both uh, hung both on both sides of the uh, tower, and they all each uh, phase has got two wires. Uh, uh, these phase conductors have two wires, so this could be a bundled conductor, as we say. There are two wires with a spacer between them uh, to reduce radio interference if it is an EHV system, or it could be just two wires which are used to increase the current carrying capacity of the uh, conductor. Uh, H frame is another wooden frame which is used uh, where you have uh, three phases uh, hung on, uh, below these insulators and then you have uh, 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 yes, ground wires on the top if they are used. And there are some fancy towers. This is a Mickey Mouse tower in Orlando near uh, uh, Disney World. So the conductors, uh, you can look at some of the manufacturer's website. One here I have given South Wire as an example or of one of them. So conductors, uh, the ampacity is based on, um, uh, conductor ampacity is based on the maximum temperature it can handle without 
reducing its tensile strength. So if you look at it, uh, you can use a, the material can be copper, which is a very good conductor, or aluminum also. Uh, yeah, it, it is uh, sometimes it is stranded to reduce the skin effect. And then all uh, conduct, all aluminum conductors are there. It, it can go up to 75 to 85 degrees in the, in, on all these cases. Then yeah, you have aluminum conductor alloy reinforced. There is an aluminum alloy right in the middle to provide the strength of the conductor. And then you have pure aluminum conductors uh, which are uh, stranded, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which, are, uh, which are around that particular uh, uh, you know, uh, reinforcement. You can also have steel reinforced, which gives much more uh, tensile, much more strength. And then the temperature of the conductor can go up to 100 degrees centigrade. And there are uh, steel supported conductors, which gives a lot more strength, where we can go up to, um, we can uh, you, uh, pass current to allow the temperatures to go up to 200 degrees. The latest one is by 3M company. They have got composite conductor, which is uh, ceramic. Uh, reinforced and they can go as high as 240 degrees C. So if you have one all aluminum conductor or a copper conductor, you can just change the conductor to the steel reinforced as composite and then increase the current carrying capacity of that particular transmission line. Uh, please note that the weight of these conductors might vary, so you may have to change the structures also to withstand the extra weight uh, by these conductors. <coughs> Conductor characteristics are resistance and inductance, and then we'll talk about capacitance in the end, depending on the height, and DC resistance and AC resistance, and these are published by the manufacturers. So if you know a conductor type on a transmission tower, then you can get the resistances looking at the manufacturer's catalogs. And then the resistance is rho L by A, and then the AC resistance increases due to skin effect, and that is also published by the manufacturers. Uh, Inductance of a transmission line, we have got a three-phase construction. So if you have uh, uh, three-phase construction, self-impedance has got, and we talk about self-impedance and then the mutual impedance. If you have a conductor, it has a tendency to oppose any flow of current through that. That is, uh, there is a resistance opposes flow of current, and then inductance opposes any change in current in that. So the alternating current, which we use, a 60 hertz current, automatically uh, has uh, you know, the, the inductance of the wire opposes the current, and then that impedance is called self-impedance. And then they have, if you have two wires uh, next to each other, like a three-phase uh, system, you have A phase, B phase, and C phase. If the current is flowing on one phase, then, uh, uh, then uh, automatically it induces voltage on the other phases. The voltage induced voltage divided by the current going through that conductor gives me the mutual inductance of that. So self-impedance, there are formulas given here. This was first developed by Carson and is published in a, a published a paper in 1923. And I have given you these numbers. Uh, these are only for your reference, and it is uh, used for uh, uh, you know just to verify what uh, data you have is a valid number or not. Then uh, you have self-impedance, which is given by this equation, where DE is the uh, average uh, uh, distance uh, between the, each one conductor and the return path. Uh, so if you have a single conductor and only return path, then it is given by DE divided by geometric mean radius. Uh, and uh, and if, uh, depending on the type of uh, the soil, uh, you have earth resistivity, which varies quite a lot. Uh, you know, it is 100 meter ohms per meter in the normal, and swamp is 10 to 100. And then on a damp earth, the DE is around 2790. And these values are available by manufacturers or in different reference books on uh, transmission lines uh, for various uh, uh, types of uh, uh, soil. Mutual inductance is just the distance between the two, D, and then uh, E is uh, uh, effective uh, earth return path distance, which is uh, in the previous uh, 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 you know, slide here, we have D is 2790. And then that is this number and divided by the distance between uh, the two bars in feet. Okay. 
So then the positive sequence, if you look at it, uh, it is, uh, if I uh, positive sequence, well, how do I do that? It is a balanced network where you have got a, a voltage uh, system or a current system rotating in counterclockwise direction. So if I apply a balanced voltage, three phase voltage to a transmission line with a short at the other end, the voltage drop uh, due to the currents on, uh, on due to, uh, for example, A phase current on the A phase wire is uh, current multiplied by the self impedance, plus it gets induced voltage due to currents flowing on B and C phases, which are given by uh, IB, uh, ZM, and then IC, ZM. So you, what you said is the total voltage from face to ground uh, is given by, VA is given by IA times self impedance plus IB times mutual impedance plus IC times mutual impedance, then which is nothing but IA times ZS minus ZM. It is just a mathematical relationship. If you do that, you get VA equals IA uh, times ZS minus ZM. Since it is a balanced network, the A phase voltage is nothing but the positive sequence voltage and then A phase current is nothing but the positive sequence current. So V1 by I1 gives me the positive sequence impedance, which is nothing but self impedance minus the mutual impedance. And then if you look at the zero sequence, you apply the same voltage on all three phases and which induces the same current, I0, 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 which is they are in uh, zero sequence currents on phase. And then if you go through the same formula, what we get as zero sequence impedances, self impedance plus two times the mutual impedance. So we know the formula for self-impedance. We know the formula for mutual impedance. We can calculate the positive and zero sequence. We can do the reverse also. You can calculate the self and mutual impedance uh, based on uh, positive and zero sequence. And here we introduce another term called K0, the ground return impedance path. The, you have got a positive impedance plus the ground return path. The ground return path is nothing but K0 times Z1. K0 is called the zero sequence compensation factor, which we will use later in uh, distance relays uh, to determine the distance up to the fault point, uh, impedance up to the fault location, if there is a face to ground fault. So just note that this formula is K0 is one third of Z0 minus Z1 by Z1, and we will use it a little later. Again, as I reiterated in the beginning, the impedance in formula, everything is given here just to make sure that the values you are using make sense uh, because you are using the impedance values of a transmission line from station A to station B to determine uh, the settings on the relays which protect the transmission lines. So that is why this uh, lecture is only to give you the background on how these parameters are calculated. The positive sequence impedance is self minus mutual. If you go through those equations, you get resistance RC plus 0.2794 times uh, logarithm of uh, D is the distance between the two phases. And then GMR is a geometric mean radius, uh, ohms per mile. If you notice that the, the height of the conductor is of no importance in calculating the positive sequence impedance. Uh, it, has, uh, it does not depend at all on the height and then is not dependent on the earth resistivity and fictitious earth return path. So it is just an important note that it directly is proportional to the spacing uh, between the two uh, conductors. So if it is, if it is uh, at higher voltages, the spacing is more. So inductance tend to increase, but your geometric mean radius uh, also uh, changes because uh, you use bundle conductors where the effective radius of the conductor increases much higher than a normal uh, single conductor. And zero sequence, if you look at it, uh, it de is dependent on the earth resistivity and fictitious earth return path. These again are numbers or equations for you to just calculate and verify the numbers what you are using for relay settings are okay or not. This is only if you doubt these numbers are correct or not. But in the configurations of uh, transmission line, the phase conductors can be, uh, you know, in a delta formation like this. You see that on a single uh, tower, uh, steel tower, with one side, uh, one phase, and the other two phases on the other two sides, which forms almost a delta. Uh, or it could be a horizontal or a vertical configuration. In the H frame, what we saw, it was a horizontal configuration. 
and in the other picture what we saw uh, was uh, was a uh, vertical configuration on the uh, picture of uh, the G. E. Alstom reference book. So you can uh, calculate the geometric mean distance for a flat configuration is 1.26 times distance between the, uh, these two conductors. And then uh, if you use bundle conductors, the geometric mean radius increases. Uh, this is all essentially we have covered here. Uh, so I don't uh, go through this much. And then if you look at three phase parameters, uh, the reactance is basically uh, 0.2794 log GMD by GMR. The reason why I have given this here is that you can split this equation as the 0.2794 logarithm of 1 over GMR, which is just based on the conductor rating, and then 1 foot is the distance between the conductor. And normally, all the data of uh, conductors, they provide you the reactance at 1 foot spacing. That is the very first term here. And then you know the uh, resistance of the wire from the conductor data. And then you know the inductance, one foot reactance from the uh, manufacturer's catalogs. And if you know the spacing between the conductors, A phase and B phase or C phase, and then you can know the geometric mean distance between them, depending on the uh, configuration of the conductors and spacing between the conductors, you can calculate the reactance. So essentially, you can ignore the previous uh, ones in the sense what we gave. Uh, these are all backgrounds. If you want to go into more details, you can use the previous ones. Otherwise, if you have a manufacturer catalog, you know the reactance of uh, per foot, and then you know the tower configuration. You can calculate the reactance, which is uh, the main part of the, um, of, uh, the impedance of a transmission line. So this, uh, we will go through some uh, calculations and show you how to do this for a typical uh, configuration. Uh, here we have taken a 230 kV ACSR conductor. This is a Drake, it is a, it, they go by the names. It's a Drake conductor. GMR is given as 0 0.0375 feet. Reactance at one foot is published by the manufacturers 0 0.399. So on geometric mean distance, as we said, if it is a flat configuration is 1.26 times the distance between uh, one and two, and then that is 18 feet, you can calculate, it comes to about 0 0.756. So it's 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 ohms per mile is a typical reactance value for a single conductor transmission line with a, a rating of 15 feet. And if you look at uh, various voltages, the phase spacings are uh, about seven to nine feet in 69 kV, 12 to 15 feet up to 230 kV and then 20 to 25 feet at uh, 345 and 30 to 35 at 500 and 40 to 50 feet at uh, uh, 765 kV. So this, if you use this, you can from the previous uh, 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 you know example, you can easily calculate what would be the typical uh, reactance values for that. And because these are bundle conductors you can see that uh, the geometric mean radius of a single conductor is uh, 0.778 times the radius, that is 0.4848. And then you have spacing between the two, which is 12 to uh, 12 inches here. So the geometric mean radius is square root of 12 times 0.4848, uh, which comes to about 2.4199 inches. So if you put two conductors as a bundle and uh, with a spacing between the two of 12 inches or 24 inches, then it effectively increases the equivalent radius of a conductor. And this is used to reduce the radio interference um, caused by uh, the electric breakdown of um, the insulation uh, at higher voltages. So the reactants, as you see here, it comes down to about 0.61 ohms. When we calculated 0.75 for a single conductor, it reduces here, even though the spacing is a little higher than what we took in the previous example. Uh, the last one, which we don't use much, but it's very useful in calculating the voltage rise of a transmission line. Uh, this is the capacitance, and they have a Carlson's formula, very similar to Carlson's formula, and I have just given you for your uh, reference. Uh, So with uh, this, uh, uh, we have covered the first portion, which is just basically the um, 
basically uh, the parameters of the transmission line. We will uh, talk about uh, distance relays and then applications in the next three lectures.